everybody. This is Tamara Dozier from Tilted Asylum Studios. Today I'm going to show you how to make the ornament that you saw at the beginning of this video using a paper mache egg. Now I found these eggs at Walmart after Easter um, by the dozen and I think I paid mm, 50 cents for a dozen of them. So this is something you might want to be looking out for um, after holiday sales. They come in really handy not only for doing this ornament but you can use it for um, the core of sculpting a face or Easter egg house or I mean whatever your imagination can come up with. So the supplies that you're going to need to do this are of course your creative paper clay and the egg. You could also use a styrofoam egg if you can't find one of these um, your local craft store should have some styrofoam eggs as well. Um, you're going to need something to roll your clay out with. You're going to need a variety of sculpting tools and a paintbrush, old paintbrush. You'll need some masking tape, some scissors, a skewer. You're going to need an old um, center from a toilet paper, the cardboard roll. You'll need some water and you'll need some white glue and I use it at both full strength and I mix it half water and half glue. Also you'll need some fine grit sandpaper. This is a 220 grit and this is just to, once you get the clay on here you want to smooth out the surface. We're not going for perfection but um, the clay, when you're working with it and it's wet, it can get a little bumpy, so this kind of helps smooth that out. So, let's get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start building this top of the white. And the way that I do that, set that there, is I just take the toilet paper roll, cut it. Usually I just cut it in half. And then you're going to cut strips that are about a half inch. And what you'll end up with is this. I take that strip. It's about um, two, and a half, two and a half inches long. I'm going to take that strip and I fold it in half. I find the center and then I poke a hole all the way through. And once this is, ornament is finished, you'll use that, those holes to actually hang, it, uh, you know, a string of ribbon or a um, cord or yarn through so you, you can hang the ornament up. You'll take this and you'll tape it so that you get this ring. Then I'll take my white glue at full strength and I will put it on the egg, I mean on, on the top, the cardboard, and I will center it on the top of the egg like so. Put some masking tape over it to hold that in place while it dries. And then just put it aside and let it dry. The next thing we're going to do once that dries is we're going to put the little top on. And all you do is you take your scrap cardboard and it's kind of hard to see. You're going to draw around here to make a circle like so. I don't know if you can see that. Cut that out and then you will glue that on to the top of the ornament. Again, hold it down with some masking tape. Set it aside and let it dry. Now when that's completely dried, you will end up with this. And I take my skewer, which I've cut, it doesn't matter the length, just so it goes through, and I poke it through the holes 
one so I don't lose the holes while I'm sculpting and also so it uh, kind of gives me something to hang on to. And what we're going to do now is we're going to sculpt on this. We're going to add the first layer of clay. Let me move some of these things out of my way. So you take your clay. And we're just going to roll it out. You don't want it too thick. Um, I'd say maybe... of an inch or sixteenth of an inch. Not as thin as paper, thicker than cardstock. I'll show you here in just a minute. Um, about, can you see that? About that thick. Okay. I'm going to take my uh, white glue that I've mixed with water and I'm going to start by just going to paint the glue on the egg. Just a light coat. All I want to do is give um, the uh, clay something to grab hold of and hang on to while it's drying. I'm just going to take and start covering and pushing the clay in place. Here we go. Don't worry if it doesn't completely cover because we're going to cut off the extra and then add little patches here and there until it's completely covered. And the way that I do this is I pinch it. probably use your scissors to do this easily. I use my, my knife, which always scares my husband. Um, he thinks I'm, you know, at any minute he's going to be running me to the emergency room. Yeah, that works pretty good. Don't worry about the seams. We'll take care of that in a minute. Just pinch it. Cut off the extra. I think I like using those scissors. I'm pretty sure my husband will like it too. Now what I'm doing is I'm pushing on the clay just to make sure I don't have any air bubbles trapped in here. I'm going to take uh, little pieces and just put them in place. Now don't worry about covering the top yet. We want to do the bottom and let it dry and then start working on the top because this we're actually going to sculpt lines in so that it looks like the top of a light bulb. So it helps to have the bottom dried. That way you're not, you know, smushing your finger into your wet clay and messing up what you've already done. Okay. Isn't that ugly? Don't worry, it'll get pretty. I always tell my students when it comes to art, you have to get through the uglies to get to the pretties. So don't let the uglies, uh, you know, freak you out or think you're doing it wrong. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this so that I have a nice straight, semi-straight um, edge here. Just take that off. Now if you're letting um, children do this, which this is a great craft for children, do not let them have an exacto knife without supervision. You really can seriously injure yourself. I've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, I can sometimes look like I'm being a little reckless, but really I'm aware of where my fingers are, where the edge of the blade is. But seriously, uh, I wouldn't let kids play with uh, or use a sharp knife like that. It is extremely sharp. Okay, all I'm doing is taking some water and smoothing out the surface. I'm not trying to get it perfectly smooth. I'm just trying to um, seal the seams. Uh, I will, after this is dry, sand it lightly to get a smoother surface. But 
This ornament has kind of a comical look to it, so I don't really care if it's as smooth and shiny as a real light bulb because, um, hey folks, it's not, okay? So it's art. Have fun with it. Don't sweat the little stuff. Okay, so we're going to just set this aside like so. Let it dry, and I'll be back once that's dry, and we'll work on the top. Okay, I have one that's dry, so I don't have to worry that I'm going to mess it up. Uh, I'm going to take the skewer out for the, uh, well actually, the first thing I want to do is sand this a little bit because if you can look at the surface it is a little bumpy. And I'm going to take my 220, tear off a piece that, you know, is comfortable to work with, and I'm just going to start slightly smoothing it out. Again, uh, as I said previously, you know, we're not going for a perfectly smooth glass-like surface, but, you know, I also don't want it to look like it has some weird disease. Now, like, I don't know if you can see that little divot right there. So when I go to sculpt the face, I'll put some clay in there to fill it out, but I'm not worried about it right now. One thing about uh, doing this type of art is, well, any art, I, I don't care if you're painting on a canvas, um, throwing mud on a turning, uh, you know, a, a wheel, a potter's wheel, or knitting or crochet, it should be fun. Don't sweat it. It's fun. Uh, it's therapeutic. It's relaxing. Um, most of the time, yes, I do have pieces that totally drive me crazy, but um, I try to enjoy it. Uh, it helps me to de-stress from everyday life. Okay, so that's smooth enough. Uh, let's see. I'll take a... Well, I thought I had a sponge laying around. I don't, so I'm just going to use some paper towel. And get a little damp just to kind of wipe off the dust because, you know, I really don't want to be breathing this stuff in. All right. Now, I'm going to take this out so I can start working on the top. Get some more clay. And then we're going to roll that out. I'm sure this is real exciting for you guys to watch me roll clay. Almost as exciting as, you know, watching paint dry, I guess. So let me know. Uh, if you want me to speed up through these parts, I can do that. Now, I want this to be a little bit thicker than what I did this part with. And the reason is because I'm going to be sculpting in it. So, hmm. I'll thicken that up a little bit more. I want it to be about like that. Okay? Handy dandy exacto knife. I want to cut an edge. Like so. Do you do this to me? Come on, come on, come on. These people want to see. There we go. Bad camera. Anyway, I'm going to just go around like so. Kind of push it out a little bit so it adheres to the surface really well. this all the way through so I don't lose the other hole. Like I just did. <laughs> Where are you? I know you're right opposite of this one. Oh, there we go. Okay. Again with the knife, I'm just trimming off the top.
Now I'm going to do the top while I hold this in my hand. Put a little bit more glue on it. Try that scissor trick again. Yep, that works pretty good. I might have to do that more often. that edge, get rid of that seam. I use a lot of water when I'm sculpting with paper clay. It really helps uh, move the clay around, smooth out any bumps and seams. Sometimes when it dries, uh, you'll get a crack in it. That's not a problem. You just take a little bit of the clay that you thin down with some water and Put it in that cracked area, let it dry, and no one is the wiser. Okay, now I have this tool that I use to make these next uh, to do the sculpting, but you could use a darning needle, a piece of wire, um, the edge of a butter knife. It's entirely up to you. You don't have to go buy um, fancy tools. Um, you can see I've had this one a long time. It's not normally, they don't come bent. I've been pretty rough with it over the years. But my point is you don't have to spend a lot of money on tools to be able to sculpt. You can look around your house and find many, many, many objects, items that you can use. So let's get going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center here. Like so. And I'm just going to work my way around, just pressing it in. Don't worry if you distort the holes because, you know, we'll take that skewer and poke them back in there. Okay. I think I need my glasses for this, so give me just a second, folks. Ah, I can see again. Okay. Here we go. And then I'm going to find the center again, here. And you could put as many lines on here as you want. This just works out visually for me. And yes, I know on a light, the lines go at an angle. And if you want to sculpt it that way, it's your piece. Do whatever you want. This works for me. It makes me happy. So that's the way I do it. I'm going to come around the bottom here because I want to straighten that out a little bit. And now I'm going to use my paintbrush. It's just an old, it's just an old paintbrush soft. It's a soft paintbrush. I'm going to get it wet and I'm going to just go through here, smooth this out, smooth the lines out a little bit so I don't have um, squished up edges. through. 
and then I'm going to set this aside and let that dry. Well, I, wait a minute, there's one more thing. I forgot. There's one more thing. We've got a little knot that goes on the top of the bulb. So what you're going to do is just take, oh, I don't know, about that size. Kind of make a cone out of it. I'm trying to do this one-handed, folks. Squish it so that it's flat. Add a little water in here. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing it down. Then I'm going to use this is a silicon tipped tool. Again, you don't have to use these. You can use it a little old spoon or a popsicle stick or whatever you have. But I'm going to smooth this down so that the edges are joined in. Set that aside and let it dry. Okay, the top is all completely dry now, so I can actually start sculpting on the face. And I'm just using a piece of cardboard ring uh, to hold it, so it's not rolling around on the on the table. We're going to start with uh, the nose. So I'm going to pinch off a little piece, and you can build your nose whatever shape you want. I'm going to do a little triangle and I'm going to start out with a piece of clay about this size. Try and find a center of the uh, ornament. And I'm going to pinch this into a triangle. And you want to try and get to the center, and then I'm going to smooth it out, use a little bit of water. I'm going to do the eyes. And the way that I'd like to do eyes is I'll roll out some clay. Too about that thick. And then I have, uh, this is a ring that is used in a candle holder and they make really nice little cutters. They come in different sizes. But uh, I use that to cut out my circles to start my eyes. This way I know uh, they're about the same size. And now he's not gonna have three eyes. I'm gonna cut this one in half and then add it to those other two. But if you're more comfortable just 
pinching off a couple of pieces of clay, rolling them out to get the eyes. That's fine. You know, do it however it works for you. I'm just going to temporarily put them where I think I want the eyes to be and then press down. Okay, those look like bug eyes, so I think I will start that, uh, make that a little bit smaller. Maybe just go with two. So I'm pressing down and then I'm rolling my finger to kind of pin, push the edges down. eyelids.
Now in any of these steps, you could actually stop and let it dry. Like when you put the mouth on, let it dry before you do anything else. Stop right here and let it dry before you put the eyelids on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep on doing this. But uh, sometimes letting it dry in between steps is a good thing because you, you do take the chance of messing it up. So let's see if I can uh, do this without messing it up. If you notice that your clay is starting to get a little dry because it's been sitting out, just add a little water to it. It doesn't take much. And the last thing I want to do is give him cheeks. So I'm going to roll the clay out like I did with the eyes. And then I'm going to shape it almost like a comma. Like that. I don't know if you can see that shape very well. Let me see if I can let go of it. There we go. Or teardrop with a curved tail. Yeah, like so. And curve the tail. Get the area that you want it to go. And usually I make sure the mouth is completely dry before I put this on. But we'll see how we can do this. Put the smallest point facing down. Press it on and then push it out like this and down with your finger. Add a little water. And then smooth it out like you've done all the other parts. Oops. Okay, Tammy. Usually I have the uh, mouth dried before I start doing this so I can work the detail in here. Be careful where you put your support, your finger. I have totally destroyed a uh, face that I've sculpted by just resting my finger on the wrong thing.
get done with the sculpting, you want to let it dry. Oh, there is one other thing that I do. On my dolls and sculptures, I'll paint the eyes, but with these, I actually like to just have uh, an indent for the iris. So I will use a stylus right now. I'll just show you what I've got. I've got this that I used for fingernail art. And I'll take the biggest one and I'll decide where I want his pupils to be. Let's get it real wet. And then I will. Then that way I can just paint those black. That part right there. Okay, so we're just gonna let him dry. And once he's dry, we'll paint him. And here is the light bulb ornament completely finished. I went ahead and painted it with the red and some pink in the cheek. I antiqued with a little bit of brown. This is a silver metallic. And then I sprung a ribbon through it. Once the paint was dry, I finished it with a uh, spray-on polyurethane varnish. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you, if you decide to make any of these ornaments, please do share them with me. I'd love to see some pictures of your work. Until the next video, thank you for watching and have a great day.